Good morning. How are you? Did you freeze? Good morning. You froze. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. See, this is what happens, isn't it? Like we think we're starting something and then there's a glitch and it stops and starts and stops and starts. So I think this topic is a doozy and it should be so easy. Should. I heard it. Correction. Would you like to introduce our topic, Suzanne? Today, it is Gene Key 6. And this is from Gene Key, The Gene Keys with Richard Rudd, embracing your higher purpose. And the Gene Key is number six. It's moving from the shadow of conflict to the civic state of peace, and it's through diplomacy. Yeah. So <laughs> I would like to really dumb this down. Like we need to write a like peace for dummies kind of handbook, you know, <laughs> because I think we make it so difficult. I mean, conflict, I think we all know really, really well. My thoughts just to kick us off on conflict is, you know, the people that you love the most or who you have the most conflicts with. And not necessarily that it has to turn into a fight or anything, but there's the most um, uh, places where you where your edges get meet or you get triggered or whatever. And what I want to say is I yearn and pray for the day where when those conflicts come up or I get those trigger feelings, I can easily... Yeah, transmute them and say, this is an opportunity for diplomacy so that I can keep the peace. And I am not- And not from a, not from a state of compromising your own integrity. No. But no. from a place of honoring where everybody is. Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't, I wasn't- um, feeling that great this last week I had this strange thing with this swollen around my eye and we don't really know what kind of irritation or inflammation it was but um I didn't attend but John was we were out in the country at our little river cabin and he went to uh one of his music buddies that lives out there on a farm and they had a big music jam and a big pig roast and all that stuff and it was an opportunity that I was looking forward to because I thought this is exactly the kind of place I need to immerse myself is around people who are not like me, who don't think like me, who don't have education like me, who, you know, and, and for an opportunity to practice what I preach. <laughs> and isn't it interesting that my body would come up with this strange thing that was like itching and and swollen and my eye was like almost like I, it was hard for me to even see to drive a couple of days so I love that I um conveniently was in, unable to attend but he went and he was telling me about all these really cool people he met and the conversations they had which of course steered very clear from certain topics and I am so impressed that he can do that because he's really Diplo diplomatic in a curious and kind way, you know? And I still feel triggered when certain people say certain things and certain words that I can feel the whole visceral thing in my body that I'm trying to learn to tame. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. Um, it's about parenting yourself and self-soothing and not it, it's 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 that learning within us of how to be emotionally stable and secure within our own self um and i think that's i mean it's talking about emotional defense strategies and when we developed those when we were that's our emotional intelligence when we we're between four or seven and 14. Mm -hmm. And so this all also has to do with um, 
our vagus nerve. And so a lot of times the emotional craziness can take us into dis-ease, right? Because we're all over the place, but, and it gives us this biofeedback loop. So really what we can do, some of the tools that we can use is helping reset our vagus nerve and recognizing our autonomy and that nobody's here to hurt us. Yeah. And I think explaining for some people what the vagal nerve, the vagus nerve is, I mean, that connection between the brain stem that goes all the way down the spine. So basically it's like our electrical system that yeah. connects our head, our body, our brain, our emotional system. It's kind of all there. And when we can get that into um, a calm state where we're not just looking at it from the meaning making that we've created around whatever somebody just said, and it creates that trigger in our system. How do we look at the meaning making like, oh, that's my seven-year-old responding to feeling threatened and I can, that's not who I am now. You know, I'm 60 years older than that now. So I can respond differently or, um, um, I mean, even at times where I've had physical trauma, I was, I was telling, um, somebody the other day, I was in a car accident on my seventh birthday and hold, and my stepdad said, we're going to, we're going to have an accident because he could see that the cars were all piling up. We were right by the lake and Lake Erie and the ice had just settled on the highway. And all the cars were just boom, 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 boom. So he says, we're going to, we're going to hit the car in front of us. So hold on. So everybody held on and we did really good through that first impact. And then we got hit from behind. And that's when I wasn't prepared and I smashed my face on the seat. Um, and, um, but that physical reaction of when I feel like I need to brace for impact, I still even when I'm perfectly safe in my living room, but watching a scary movie, I still arch my back. So it's like stored in there, you know? So now I go, oh, I'm, I'm safe. I'm, it's okay. Yeah. So I love that you called it self-parenting, self-soothing. And there was another word of how to handle that inner conflict. Um, that well, at something that I'm taking directly from Richard Bread, he was talking about it being, you know, not needing to have protection. Like there's that actual fear of being a victim of another or somebody that can harm you, which is such a waste of energy. If we really truly know that no thing can truly touch who you are. And I'm talking from a total perspective of you are going to be okay, regardless of the circumstances around you. Now they may come to you to experience something, but you're the one that's driving <laughs> around in the vehicle. So, um, it's just shattering that illusion. That there's anything or anyone that is outside of ourselves that can touch us in that way. Yeah. So that protection thing is so, and it's so, it, right? It's that old part of our brain, right? That is. Oh, yeah. That's what's caused wars and everything else because we haven't dealt with why we need to feel protected. I mean, yeah. the beautiful thing that he was talking about is that it's created all these various different cultures. Think of all the flags that are, you know, like everyone takes pride in their own um, beingness um, with a group. But at, this, at the same time, we don't have to protect ourselves from one another. It's, I mean, it feels very, um, we're not living in let live. It's just like, yeah, love your brother as yourself. The type, the type, the Christian, the Christian or the Christ consciousness kind of expansion, which is why we're in that epoch right now, right? We're in that um, space of becoming more human, 
I believe, um, by learning how to expand our our love operating system versus the fear operating system, which we have been living with for millennia. So it's the, I don't want to say the unlearning, but it's not letting that control us, I think, which is where realizing what's going on with the vagal nerve and our bodies, realizing um, that this is an old trauma, an old fear, an old story, and the meaning making is what we call it in one of my communities. I am wondering, I don't think of the word diplomacy, but tell me how you see that fitting in as this vehicle or the pathway to get to peace. It's when we, for me, it's when, when there might be conflict that, that does arise how we can still keep our heart open. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And it's, it's also, it's also stepping out. I think of the diplomats that we have in our state department that go and live in embassies around the world and the ones that come and visit here. And this is UN week, right? The United Nations are convening this week. So it's a really big time for all of these world leaders to come together and exchange their thoughts and learn from one another, hopefully learn from one another versus come in and say, this is the way we see the world. Um, so there is, there is a curiosity, there is a willingness to step outside of what I know in my own world and culture versus, um, but I, I don't know, I, you know, I'm trying to think of what the Typically, I know what a lot of Latin roots are, and I'm trying to think of what diplomacy actually comes from. Is there another way to think of that word? I, don't, I, I, I think of it as being almost like a political science. Like it sounds very sciencey, and he goes, "This is not science. This is the opposite of science." Uh, yeah, he talks about it being um, emotion, like dealing with being emotionally mature. Mm. and you can feel into another person's aura without it interrupting yours so Mm -hmm. you it's like an early warning system for conflict and so as you temper your own actions and take care of your own person you can help be that bridge in that space and time to dissolve that conflict that's amazing so there's that safe space holding. There's the creating space for something new to be versus the constriction of it has to be this way and I've got my side and you have your side. You know, there's this opening and a softening and I love that. So it's, it's it, this, is, this key is actually in the ring, ring of alchemy. So it makes sense that, you know, it, it's alchemizing some of that old, transmuting yeah i love that um and i don't know do you think that prayer that i was saying that i was saying for my my energy shift this i mean that little short thing might be of value today sure i'm gonna read this because it struck me as just such sweet words it's a prayer of transmutation angels and beings of the pure light, please help me to purify and transmute this dense, low frequency karmic energy into love, into light, into purity, into truth, into the spirit of divine tenderness. Oh my gosh. I mean, tenderness by itself is the beautiful feeling word to me but divine tenderness feels really luscious you know I guess maybe it feels like peace yeah I mean it's when I think of peace I I think of being at one Mm. 
yeah, not all like these different pieces warring with each other, which I sometimes feel like there's so much going on in my system. Well, and what's interesting is, you know, when I was listening to Richard, he was talking about the fact that, you know, there's a lot of people out there, you know, for praying for peace and putting their energy out in the world for peaceful resolutions. But it really comes down to each one of us doing our own work because we got to heal the conflict within ourselves. And when we really understand that and can be somatically and um, in our bodies at peace, not at war with ourself, that's the first step. And yeah. then we take it into the community. And then it grows from there. So it'll ripple out, but it has to start with us. Boy, I, uh, and, I, and my goal right now is just to begin operating with more diplomacy within. I mean, peace is going to be the outcome, but I, I am learning to practice this diplomacy versus the judgment of, well, there's that old thing. Um, you know, I mean, I have all this internal stuff going on, which is still feeling like conflict, you know? Um, okay. And I would really appreciate that moving into a space of loving acceptance of, um, I use this with my um, coaching clients because our first meeting tends to be the uh, going over of the assessment of their feedback from their, um, from their leadership survey. And um, it's a, it's hurtful because they're listening to what people are saying about how they show up in the world. And they also are looking at what they said about themselves about how they show up in the world. And there's this uh, like, well, I want to change it all. I want to be better. I want and, and so we where I say is, first of all, let's just um, open the space for self-awareness. And, and then the biggest thing is, can we be compassionate towards ourselves as we start seeing, oh, that's where I'm doing that thing that those people were talking about. I'm doing that protective thing, or I'm doing that controlling thing. You know, it's so funny because if that layer of self-acceptance and self-compassion isn't there, it, this just turns into a muddy mess and nothing changes. They kind of like stay stuck in their yuckiness versus the and then they start having that compassion towards others but i think it has to start being focused here first of look at all my foibles and my idiosyncrasies and the way i operate oh my goodness i have enough to work on here how dare i exactly. judge others well and that's the what's interesting when you feel about it it's really about the that exchange for a healthy relationship. So it's giving and receiving and it's listening and expressing and it's that that conduit and being mindful of like what you were saying, that awareness, that self-awareness of how, I, how am I even communicating with myself? What are the words that I'm choosing to use oh. when I describe myself or how I, you know, because whenever you say I am, really, it's spelling. Okay, we're <laughs> spelling yeah. it out and being mindful of expressing those things and also what we're receiving. And um, yeah, it's very, it's, it's being honest with yourself. Yeah. And um, for me, it's in one of the easiest ways. It's not easy, but if I, if the first thing is to remember that I'm, I'm in this space of learning and growing first, but, the, um, to create that space around it, um, that one Sufi teacher used to say, you know, can we find the love even here? And I always think, okay, I need to make space because I am not finding any love in the middle of this mess. <laughs> so it's that, and so you know what creates space? Breathing. You know, it opens it opens up these channels, all of our electrical and emotional and mental and, you know, um, nervous uh, energy pathways. And, and 
just taking a breath, which I've learned to do more often in my conversations too, because when I'm having a <clears throat> loud discussion, I guess might be the word I would use. <laughs> um, and how I stop now and go, oh man, I can hear myself. Let me, let me take a moment here and breathe into that so that I can, you know, soften. And then is I'm a bit parenting. Oh, is that what it is? Yes, it well, is. Well, you're parenting yourself, you know? No one mm -hmm. else is going to do that for us. So um, as much as we want other people to, and then we blame them for not doing it. Yes, that's true. Self-soothing. Self-soothing. Um, all right. So coming off to peace or, you know, jet setting yes, to peace. Yes, please. It talks about the ultimate defense is emptiness. This, this is the essence of the wisdom taught by the great sages because defense maintains the illusion that we are ever separate. So it, you know, in true whole consciousness, um, this is where duality is transcended. We really understand our oneness and you recognize that the kingdom of heaven is now, like it's present, always has been present. It's just now our consciousness can see it. Yeah. And can see that oneness. I think and, my brain just hurts because it wants to like have all kinds of words around that. And I'm like, just be quiet. You know, it's so interesting about how I, I can't, it's to, to make the space for me, it's to be quiet. Ay, ay, ay. I will say the the part that I'm still working with in this gene key that as he describes it is the light body and it is talking about the rainbow body again oh let's talk body. about it again because last time we got we added on that part to last week's about the rainbow body please share well it talks about humankind is still evolving this new energetic and energetic circuitry of all these various different frequencies and that makes sense when we're talking about the the ganglia or the you know the where this is housed our nervous system oh yeah so, um but it also talks about how the body is trying to catch up and because it deals with the ph of the body this is the part that i'm still working through in these concepts of seeing forward in the future of just how we are embodying these vehicles uh, and how it's how they're morphing um but it talks about um how these mutations are going to affect the way in which our skin tracks light so that the skin of someone manifesting the city can be transparent um because they, they're just accepting so much more light into their bodies literally becoming the light body or the rainbow body oh, um the body of glory as they say so in essence in this vision um our skin cells learn to capture light and our digestive system changes since light will be the ultimate for our subtle bodies so food won't be as necessary yeah it's going to so change like photosynthesis. Alkalinity. Yeah, it's going to change the alkalinity of our body. Um, but this is talking about the subtle body. So I'm, I'm, I'm still because a subtle body is is like the the body above our the energetic body outside this physical body, the the aura, if you will, auric body. But as this is what I'm understanding. Um, but as far as the pH of the body is concerned the spiritualization of the physical form will gradually weaken the extremes of this pH scale, there, thereby reducing the acidity or the alkalinity of the body, which brings the body in balance, right? So sometimes when you think of very acidic thoughts or conflict, you can think, you imagine emotions create probably more acidity. <laughs> yeah. So 
I, I'm still playing around with that. No, I love that because I had that thought over the weekend about acid and alkaline intake to my body and like what was causing this inflammation and um, and then how my body was rejecting it, like how it was like inflamed and then it was like scaling and it wanted to peel off all of that skin. And I just was like, something is going on here. And of course I wanted to understand it and I wasn't given that um opportunity to understand it. So I'm still in a place of huh, inquiry, but I love that. Yeah. yeah. And I also just found a pH kit in my, um, cleaning out my bathroom. I'm wondering, I would, it would be interesting for me to see what my pH is right now. Um, and then what it's, it talks about the on the collective level, this city, the sixth city, will be the very last city to fully mutate in the coming shift of global consciousness. Because only when peace is recognized on earth as the natural state of our collective consciousness can the future vehicle of humanity be built. In other words, the myth of world peace is the pretext for building the future body that will take us beyond form itself. Uh huh. And when I think of that, I think of everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, like, so, which is why we don't, this is the part where our it's, mental constructs are like going. Right. So it, what if? You have to, you have to deal with paradoxes because that's just our nature. Yep. yep. And that's why, you know, why is chaos theory becoming a science now? You know, um, I think it's fascinating that we are learning how to live. And, and we keep talking about diversity and inclusion and belongingness. Diversity is part of this. Can we accept difference? Can we accept something that's not the way we want it to look, you know? And it is fascinating to me how every time we open and soften into another way of learning and being how then we have another wave. It comes, it's like, wait, I just learned something. Do I, oh, another one. So it, it it's a new way of being, right? This new way of surfing the waves. Yeah. <laughs> so... This is a very deep, I think sometimes we should have like part one and part twos on a regular basis because there's always kind of an, um, we get, we close our conversation and we're like, oh, I'm going to talk about that. Oh, so I really, I feel like being really lighthearted now. Okay. So I, I'm going to pull a, pull a card from this deck. <laughs> oh, the affirmators. Affirm affirmators affirmators yes. because you know we need a little levity and you know well we say that in our description of that we get I know. To laugh I and about this stuff and i'm and like today no, got today got, today got really dave <laughs> it's all about peace within baby okay top middle or bottom middle right Divine timing. Oh, that's been my theme lately. Tell me about it. Look at that. Timing is everything or everything is timing and timing is everything. Gladly, I release my concern over timing and let things happen and as they will. <laughs> I trust that the divine schedule makers know what they're doing. It can take a long time to reach divine middle management. <laughs> <laughs> so peace be still <laughs> divine timing don't try to rush the process yep and we don't have to understand what's happening when you know oi 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 okay as my grandmother would say um well i as always appreciate the, your perspective and your sharings and this is why I love to do this this is why we love to share this with you all and any comments questions um 
you know, if somebody wants to help us learn how to do live on Facebook at the same time as doing this on Zoom, we would love that. We did it live on YouTube last week, but it, it was, it, anyway, we're, we're still learning the process of how to make this the most um, uh, available and uh, for anybody who wants to join into the conversation. So we appreciate your listening. And until next time, peace. <laughs> Pretty funny.